The National Football League is without a doubt America's most popular professional sports league. Every week, millions of people tune in, and hundreds of millions watch it around the world. It's amassed quite a fandom. But what if we told you the league has time and again been tainted by its very own players? From terrible sportsmanship to accusations of domestic abuse, drug use, and even murder, here's the NFL bad guys who give the league a bad name. First up, Albert Hainsworth. Albert is a quadruple winner in the low life category. After signing a $100 million contract, he started fights, assaulted women, played dirty, and phoned it in. Even if you weren't aware of his never-ending legal problems stemming from his inability to keep his hands off people, both men and women, you'll definitely remember seeing him literally stomp on an opponent's head after a game. He couldn't perform a meaningful down, since Tennessee dumped his out-of-shape butt on the skins. And well, he took his millions after spending 10 years on the field and retired in 2011. Good riddance. Then we have Tom Brady. Speaking of bad behavior, it's easy to root against Tom Brady. Few NFL players have created a more insufferable persona over the last two decades than Tom. Dude's consistently pointing to the chip on his shoulder, despite a string of Super Bowl victories, lucrative endorsement deals, and glossy ESPN documentary features. His meltdowns or temper tantrums on the Tampa Bay sideline, lashing out and trashing team equipment, makes him look more like a toddler than a 44-year-old multimillionaire and a popular name in the NFL. Tom Brady sets a terrible example as someone with such a huge platform and with so many young fans watching. Up next, Johnny Manziel. Johnny Manziel is a classic example of what can happen when a player fails to take his sport seriously. In what seemed to be a promising career just taking off, he joined the league with the nickname Johnny Football. Manziel played with the Cleveland Browns during the 2014-15 season, but that was the end of it, and he'd never play again in the NFL. Manziel's issue? His own discipline, or the lack of it. When he concluded his collegiate career, he had a lot of black marks against his name, and he then had run-ins with the law constantly in 2015 and 2016. But a 2016 domestic violence incident became the final straw for the Browns, who terminated him after one season. Manzio not only choked his career, but also brought shame to the sport of NFL. And then we have Michael Vick. Just like Manzio, big things were expected of Michael Vick when he entered the NFL. After being drafted by the Falcons, he signed a lucrative six-year contract to become their franchise quarterback, which was followed by a 10-year extension. After leading his side to a number of impressive victories, things were looking better than ever for this young Falcon. But it took a turn for the worse when in 2004, a truck owned by Vic was discovered with huge amounts of marijuana inside, but he was not charged. It didn't last very long, though, as he was yet again embroiled in another controversy. He was sued for infecting a woman with an STD before being jailed for involvement in a dogfighting ring. Vic served time in prison before returning to the NFL disgracefully, but he never reached his full potential, and he retired in 2017. Vic's 13-season career ended with 22,464 yards and 133 touchdowns. He also holds the records for the highest career rushing yards by a quarterback, with 6,109 yards. Clearly, an incredible player on the field, but an awful person off of it. And now, Ray Rice. Ray Rice is undoubtedly a legend among NFL fans, having played for the Ravens for five seasons and winning the Super Bowl in 2013. He had everything going his way. Only Jamal Lewis had rushed for more yards for the Ravens than Rice, and had his career not ended prematurely, he could have challenged Lewis for the record. But the star, who at one point had become the face of the NFL, turned out to be a violent, abusive psychopath. Rice was arrested in 2014. After a video of him hitting his then fiance in a casino elevator surfaced, this obviously sent shockwaves across the league. The NFL soon suspended him and the Ravens released him. He was then charged with aggravated assault. After appealing his conviction, though, a New Jersey judge dismissed all charges against Rice. His suspension was also overturned by the NFL, but he's never returned to the league. Up next is Plaxico Burris. People appear to have forgotten what a fantastic receiver Plaxico Burris was. But he's on our list for plain stupidity more than anything else. Plax caught almost 500 passes in his eight seasons in the NFL, amassing nearly 8,000 yards and catching 55 touchdowns, including the game-winning touchdown in Super Bowl 42 that ended the New England Patriots' hope of a perfect season. But he had a thing with his behavior. Uh, stupidity. He'd been plagued by off-field difficulties, including a holdout in 2008, forgetting to show up to practice, which resulted in a two-game ban and continuously berating officials. He'd been embroiled in two different domestic disputes, a civil lawsuit in which he failed to make public appearances in exchange for a Chevy Avalanche from a car dealership in Pennsylvania, 
and a hit and run accusation in Florida. Then there's the accidental shooting. We've all heard the story. Plax was caught with a gun in his waistband in a New York nightclub, leading to charges of reckless endangerment and unlawful possession of a weapon, which landed him in jail for two years. You can bet that if you end up in prison, you'll be remembered for more than simply football. Despite serving two years in jail, Plax could never make a comeback to the field and was always looked at with a sideways glance by the media and those around him. He then went on to retire in 2013, cutting his otherwise incredible career short thanks to the self-inflicted gunshot wound. And now, Dante Stallworth. Most of us have driven after one too many, which, by the way, you should never. And we're all just lucky it didn't happen to us, but Dante Stallworth ended up killing someone while drunk driving with his mates. And we have two questions. A. Why can't you, being a filthy rich NFL superstar millionaire, afford a freaking driver? Most NFL teams have a no questions asked call in number for a free ride home. Why not make use of it instead of killing some poor soul while drunk? This is clearly murder. B. How is he allowed to buy his way out of a murder? No, he isn't in jail in case you're wondering. He actually spent less than 30 days in prison after pleading guilty to DUI manslaughter before returning to the NFL for a few more seasons. While America's laws on manslaughter in these circumstances remain horrendously weak, most people do spend a year in prison. But once again, the only color that truly matters is green, not white, black, or brown. We don't know about you, but we have a hard time justifying Stallworth's continued participation in the NFL after the incident went on in 2013. Yes, he was suspended. Not a big deal. Must be very comforting to hear about a drunk driver who killed a man not serving any time. Up next on the list is Ray Lewis. NFL has had its fair share of murderers. Stallworth, Lewis, <coughs> O.J. Simpson. The Hall of Fame former Baltimore Raven linebacker Ray Lewis was faced with murder charges over the stabbing of two men in Atlanta in 2000, following a brawl outside a nightclub. Ah, classic. Although he was eventually found not guilty, the case remains a murky one in many people's minds. As if murdering two people wasn't enough, he admitted to misleading the police and the suit he was wearing during the fight, which could have been used as evidence, was never found. Lewis ended up settling for an undisclosed sum with the victim's family and went on to retire 13 years after the incident. Yep, again, green is all that matters. But fans give NFL a bad name too. And no, it isn't just the players who've given the NFL a bad name. Some of you fans are unbearable too. But our top picks today are Eagles and Cowboys. Remember when the Philadelphia Eagles won their first Super Bowl in 2018? Fans celebrated by vandalizing light poles, flipping cars, and starting fires. That's right, Eagles fans terrorized their own city. Following their 41-33 victory over the Patriots, Philadelphia fans spent the night rioting, looting, and destroying property in their own city. Unfortunately, such behavior from Eagles fans doesn't come as a surprise, thanks to their long history of committing some of the most blatant acts of sports fan disobedience on record. These NFL fans have earned a reputation as the worst in American sports. And is there a more bratty fan base in any sport, let alone the NFL, than the Dallas Cowboys? Despite having only seven 10-win seasons in the last 25 years, the Dallas Cowboys have by far the largest fan base in the NFL. If Facebook likes mattered, the Dallas Cowboys would be crushing it in the popularity stakes. So what is it that makes Cowboys fans so unbearably overconfident? The Cowboys, like the other teams on this list, have fans all over the world, many of whom jump on the bandwagon when them boys are winning. And even after 25 years of winning three Super Bowls, Dallas fans have this false sense of confidence as they claim each season, this is our year. But it never is. And that's a wrap for this video. See you in the next one.